this is a problem, encapsulation. How many of you have done IT? Enough. How many of you uh, have uh, never done programming at all? So you're in clear minority, so I don't care about you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, encapsulation is something that I just first want to take an example from programming, what that means. And in object-oriented programming, encapsulation is a separation of concerns, which means that every detail that is important for some particular little maneuver is encapsulated in an object and then promptly forgotten. If it works fine, forget about it. You don't have to think about that anymore. You can think about something else. So it's based on the separation of concerns. And um, if you look at it extremely abstractly, you go from the most detailed operations in a low-level object, you implement that, you get an easy-to-use minimal um, application programming interface, that is how you work with it. The next level up is an object that uses the objects below, composes them to another concept higher up. And again, that forms a blob that can be used to be an even more general object. Now, the whole idea behind this, if this hadn't been invented, we would still be sitting uh, programming uh, uh, what's called the, the uh, Kong game in BASIC or something. Right? We wouldn't get anywhere because without this, every programmer would have to think all the way from the top to the bottom. Can you imagine sitting, doing, for instance, a spreadsheet or a calculation of something, and you have to sit and program how the keys on the keyboard are detected? Well, that's totally crazy. So what you do, you let somebody program that keyboard. You make it into an object, or a function, or a module, or whatever, and then you talk to it on a higher level, like what key was pressed. Not exactly how do you find it in that row and that column on the keyboard. So you build on each other's knowledge. And if you think about it, this is what we do in science in general. I mean, we don't have to rediscover gravity every time we start a car. That has been discovered, has been described. We don't even have to understand it anymore. We just know it's there. It's been proven, it's there. We build on it, we do the next level. That's what object-oriented programming is. Now, the interesting thing is, the same thing happens in medicine. Why shouldn't it happen in medicine? It happens in everything else. If you're in administration, a manager doesn't know how to order a plane ticket. He has a secretary that does that. That's objectification, if you want to, <laughs> even though in this context it sounds a bit weird. Eh? The same thing happens in medicine. That's why we have specialists. The patient talks to the doctor at through a very narrow API. He says, I don't feel well. The doctor internally reasons much more detailed. He's thinking, you know, what about this organ system? What about that? I examine the patient and so forth. The patient doesn't need to understand this because if he did, we would be back in the, uh, I don't know which way, age, stone age. You had to invent your own medicine if you didn't feel well. You don't. You delegate this to the doctor. Now, the doctor himself, the general practitioner, also uses specialists for referrals. And he uses them at a high level. He says, you know, I think there's something wrong with his liver. At the example in the notes is the patient is nauseous and he thinks there's something wrong with his liver. So he sends him to the specialist. The specialist knows everything about the liver, knows how to do biopsies, knows all the details. And the answer he gives to the general practitioner is, well, it's cirrhosis of the liver, for instance. How the specialist reached this conclusion and exactly how he did this biopsy and exactly with which tools he did this biopsy is irrelevant. Not only is it irrelevant, it's unknown. And since it's irrelevant and unknown, the specialist can change his methods, advance in science, without that making any difference for the general practitioner. So if you look at it this way, medicine is also object-oriented. And it has to be this way because the general practitioner can't do the liver bi biopsy by himself because this guy needs to know 60 different specialities 
superficially. This guy only knows one, fundamentally, and in detail. The last real general practitioner that knew it all disappeared somewhere around 1700 or 1800. If we had stayed with this idea that the doctor is the doctor and he does it all himself, we would still be in the bloodletting industry. Right? We wouldn't advance beyond that. The only way we can advance is to build on each other's encapsulation of knowledge. Right? Um, the problem here, where I want to go, is that in current healthcare IT, this is totally neglected. Every system you see on the market today is sold on the idea that if this general practitioner had access to every detail every specialist has, medicine improves. Right? Which is totally crazy. It's exactly the other way around. The more access you give to details here, the more you're back to visual basic. Or even good old GW basic or even good old uh, Dartmouth basic, which was even worse, right? If you look at the modern healthcare record system, and believe me, I'm, I'm working with them, so I know, right? You get a level of detail here that's totally incredible. You have no idea what the conclusions are, you just see the details. If I'm looking to find if this patient has a liver disease, I'm much more likely to sit reading about what size of screws that the orthopedician pulled in his leg for three years ago, exactly which brand, right? I don't care. It's all in the way. And what has happened today is that instead of going from a medical record with like 10, 20 pages of text, today, the last two years here in the area with the common systems we have, the same patient has 300 pages of text. No summaries. No brief uh, mentions of, you know, he has a bad liver, he broke his leg. Nothing like that. You had 300 pages of text to read manually to find out. You had to make your own summaries. Um, even worse, you can't even search. Control F, you know, everybody knows what <laughs> Control F is, right? None of our large systems, healthcare record system, have the Control F search function. It's freaking unbelievable. If you ask them why they don't have it, the answer from the two major vendors I asked is, nobody asked for it. This is the level of uh, whatever. Eh? Um, which means that if you get the patient now, you have 300 pages of text to read. We used to have, back not long ago, when we had separate systems, we either had uh, medical records on paper, we had them in computers, but the computers were limited to the local department. We used to send these things on paper to each other. When, when the patient moved, you, you printed out the journal and you sent it on paper. Now the thing is, if you do that, what happens is, as a receiving doctor, you sit, you sit down for 10 or 20 minutes, you read through this thing, you condense it into a synthesis of two, three, four, five lines of text. You say, in that year he broke his leg, in that year he lost his whatever. Eh? Synthesize, write, write that in your journal and chuck out the rest. That is what you do here. You synthesize it, you have a higher level, and that's it. Now, all the IT people and the administration think, this is horrible, you can't send paper, can you? So they connect the systems. What happens today? When I sit down and look in the journal, I see those 30 pages from the other care center every time I look, which means that every time I see the patient, I have to synthesize those 30 pages into three lines of text in my head. There is no way for me to replace those pages with a summary. There is even, in the major system we have, Cosmic, there is no way to even make a memo of it and put it on the screen. There's no way. If I synthesize that into three lines of text, it ends up in the records and it moves away with time. Three encounters later, I won't even find my summary anymore. Then I have to make a summary of the summaries. Hmm? But what they have done, they've given me total access to all the details I don't want to see. 
And this is a disaster because currently, if you ask, this is just the last two years, and I think um, accidents are going to start happening. If I ask other doctors, and I've asked, I made a little semi-scientific thing here. So I went and asked 12 of them. 11 of them shamefully admitted, on condition of anonymity, that they didn't read the journals at all anymore. They asked the patient. Uh, look under the table to see if the legs are missing and stuff like that. <laughs> One of them claimed he read it. I don't believe him, because he was one of these supermen. Um, so what's going to happen now is that people, and it probably already happens, but nobody actually noticed it yet. We're going to start missing you know, terrible things that we need to know. Patients are going to have accidents because of it, and the doctor's going to hang, because it's actually in the record, but he didn't see it. He didn't read it. Right? This is going to start happening. There is no structure in the records. There is no structure in this order. Okay. Um, no questions or angry remarks about this? No. So, 